Let's okay. change it. The thing we did already? Yeah, we don't do. Oh. <laughs> Hi, welcome to unboxing number four. I'm Chris. I'm Fiorella. And we are obviously not in the same spot. No, no. Yeah, but we were when we did this the first time uh, in the kitchen of the studio, which was a kind of cool place to do it at. And it was rigged for us to speak safely. Yeah, we thought that was a nice idea, but you know, not everything goes according to plans. That's right. We now have. And to hell. <laughs> Nice clean plexiglass in between us now. <laughs> uh, Fio, I know everybody wants to know these questions from the inanimati, but what are we going to do with all this plexiglass after this pandemic? Well, the script says that we should make a huge Rosone window for a big Golgothicus outside the studio. You mean, you mean another giant sculpture like Arky? Yes, but much bigger. But I think we can talk about this later. Now let's go on with the question of the inanimati. The first one is. Ah. Who else but from Peter? Peter is a uh, is is an Peter is our our egg beater. This is what they look like in real life, mm -hmm. you know. But Peter is kind of like this in the story. Okay. So, what does Peter want to know? So Peter asks, "What your food about all is my purpose? I can't see good what is." Are they all going to be like this? <laughs> it's all mixed up. I really read it. It's, it's really written bad. Peter wrote it. It's all mixed up. Who <laughs> <laughs> wrote this? Who wrote this crap? <laughs> uh, well, to answer the question, we animati need food to keep our body strong and to grow. Yeah, but, but we don't grow like you guys do. Um, in animati grow in these kind of spurts of transmogrification as they change radically when they get closer another step to their purpose. We animati, to us, you know, food helps us grow kind of continuously and kind of, well, at a certain point, you just kind of just some of us do. Well, and to prepare our own food, we need, of course, kitchen utensils, which are not as smart as you in Animati are, I'm afraid. No, they are not. <laughs> Despite smart appliances, they're not that smart. I don't you just love that when people are always talking about smart appliances? I have a smart appliance, and smart appliance is a stupid thing that, I mean, you know, the idea of a smart appliance is when the refrigerator door is open, it goes beep, 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 beep. beep. How smart is that? Why doesn't it shut itself? Okay. number two. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, I think people would like to know what, what energizes the inanimati. Well, having a purpose brings its own energy. There you go. Maybe we need more purposes in our life and we'd have more energy. Good. Okay. The next, the next letter was from Miss Mocha, who was really one of our favorite characters. In fact, I just noticed here that I have Miss Mocha in a drawing behind me. She's a coffee pot, as you can see. She boils quickly. I'm sure everybody had this schoolmate at school. At least I did. <laughs> She's also a hashtag no filter, so kind no. Of tends to say things a little bit mm, abruptly. Just like you, Chris. I was about to ask you if she was modeled after you, in fact. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Next one is from Miss Mocha. Ah. She asks, have you any good advice for what to do to keep my finish <laughs> shining? Oh, she's so deep. Yes. You know, I mean, Miss Mocha. Existential. Yeah, that's definitely Miss Mocha. Well, uh, it's very true that feeling good about oneself, you know, feeling comfortable in your skin, that's really the first step to being a, a happy, confident individual. And I will say that you, Miss Mocha, when you're all polished up, you are truly beautiful. True. True. And you're very fortunate to be living in the world of the inanimati because you don't have things like rust there, like we have in our world, which is kind of like a disease on metal and it kind of corrodes it over time. It looks really awful. 
You do have some problems with accumulated dirt, but you know, you want to keep yourself clean like clean people do, you can manage that too. Well, probably because you in Animati were fortunate enough to be in a reality when time goes uphill. That's true. Yeah. In that big split. And that means? And that means that uh, degrading material is more an exception than the rule. I mean, listening to Ms. Mocha talk about not having rust and everything like this, mm -hmm. it also reminds me that they don't also have reproduction, which means they also don't have like the fun of, you know, birds and the bees and that kind of stuff. Let's leave it to the Discovery Channel, okay? Ah, okay. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping we'd gonna get off on one of those tangents there, you know? <laughs> no way, huh? Damn. No. Okay. So who's the next, uh, who's the next question for me? Next question comes on a card, and I guess you know who it is from. Never before seen in the ring, the champion Rocky IV, mashed by a monstrous marquee, laid low by that slicing sorceress of spellbinding blades. Will we ever find out what happened next with Shira? Ow! That, uh, I think it's pretty obvious who that's from. That was Mike. Mike the microphone. So, what happened next with Shira? That's a good question. You want to take a stab at that? A stab. Yeah, a stab at that. A stab. <laughs> what happened next with Shira? Well, as we know, Shira managed a pretty dramatic ending at the end of the fighting uh, in the Kingpin Arena. And viewers were actually expecting her to cut the strip that hold uh, Rocky's rock to the wooden handle. Mm. But that wouldn't have been outside the rule of fair play, and she's a professional after all. No, that wouldn't have been nice. And th besides, this way, Shira got to demonstrate that you know, when she spins really fast with her knife, her blades hovers like a helicopter, and also, also she cut the, the, the iron links at the end, shows how strong she is. Mm -hmm. So these are nice parts. But actually, actually, the cool part of the, the film was we revealed how Beastry found his right, right hand blade. You know, she became really, she becomes really important to him. That's the real clue of all of it. She's better than you said. She is perfect. Because for her, the occasion to leave the Kingpin Arena was too big and she couldn't pass on. And so history brought her close to him into his group of conspirator, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're plotting to kind of take over the, the Athenaeum on behalf of Demonique. It's all really easy like that. She, but she, she actually meets Arky. Yes, Downstreet. eventually she will meet Harky when she is sent out to, let's say, catch the two most dangerous escapee of the Ateneum. And who are the two escapees that she is looking for? The two escapees. Dangerous criminals, right? Really dangerous. Very right? dangerous. Are Blinken and Spot. <laughs> Blinken and Spot are her targets. Uh, yes, of course. They're really dangerous. But something is even more dangerous for Shira and the Knights, you know? beneath that name, in a place called the Cabalage, where the electric appliances are. And what is more fearful than, I don't know, big rock hammers for, for Shira? What is she feared on a Cabalage? Are small fridge magnets. The refrigerator magnets? Yeah, those like the one you have over there. Those things? I always think they so dangerous. I always think... Where did the music come from? Did you hear it too? Yeah, I heard too. Okay, so... <clears throat> now we know about that. Um, so stay tuned uh, for more of Shira's adventures and uh, refrigerator magnets. I'm going to look at these differently now. Oh, you'll see, you'll see. Uh -huh, okay, okay. So, who is the next question from? Stop. Yes, let's stop it. We have too many things to say, short time, so let's do another unboxing. Ah, okay. As long as we get them all in, all the questions from the Inanimati. We actually have a lot of characters in this. There's a lot we've already shown the audience, but there's a lot more in the story. You know, I really don't think we can ever have enough characters, though. What? The producer is complaining that we're putting everything in, but a kitchen sink. You mean, it doesn't have a kitchen sink? It didn't make the cut? Well, nobody wanted to tell him. I guess we'll see you in the next unboxing, number five. 
and we'll finish up the questions from there. Let's do it then. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. So, so what happened to the sink? I thought I had a roll. Yes, but you pulled the plug. That's sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs>